Good? All right. Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining me. My name is Tom Green, and I'm going to be talking about automating troubleshooting uh, utilizing vRealize Auto Operations Manager, Power CLI, PowerShell, and all kinds of other goodies. So today we're gonna to talk about the nature of troubleshooting and how to actually document the troubleshooting steps that you take on a daily, weekly, whatever basis. And then I'm going to give an example of how I simplified the way that I troubleshot uh, problems by using PowerShell, Power CLI modules and generating reports off of that. So when I look at troubleshooting, I think of it like a jigsaw puzzle. You've got a, a giant mess in front of you. Some of the pieces, you can see what it is. Some of them are the white side. You have to flip it over, and then you sort it to shuffle through the, the mess to try to organize what you are thinking. So for me, I put all the edges in one pile and all the center pieces in another. But you may go by, you know, these are blue pieces, these are red pieces, and sort of go by zones. Both ways are valid, and that's the way you do it. So every once in a while, working a puzzle can be fun. You, can, you guys come on in. Uh, every once in a while, working a puzzle can be fun, but if you're having to do it all the time, it's taking time away from other stuff. So imagine if you're working a puzzle and then somebody comes up and is crying. Someone's screaming, it's a baby, it's a manager, it's whoever, saying, oh, something is down. You may even be working on that puzzle, but they're still crying and you have to look away from the puzzle to deal with whatever the external screaming is. And then you have to go back and figure out where you were at the puzzle and keep doing it. But then somebody comes and they drop another puzzle on top of your, your original one. Everyone who's in operations has been there where there's a problem and it just keeps cascading and either tickets keep coming in or people keep coming by and saying, hey, how's that problem coming? It can get really disruptive. And that's a situation that I was in and I decided that as a team lead, it was time for me to spend less time with the people coming by and saying, hey, what's wrong with this virtual machine? If they're an application owner or they're an end user and something's wrong and they know to come to someone who's using the VMware team because VMware is at the intersection between networking, storage, compute, and application. Everything goes into one, you know, that person can say, okay, well, this needs to actually go to another team. That's awesome, that's great responsibility and it's good job security because you know everybody and you have a little taste of everything. But I was spending 30 minutes every time somebody came and said, hey, what's wrong with this virtual machine? It may be a Windows problem. It may be an application issue. Who knows? So I actually did Visio and drew this. This is going to be available in the slide deck which is already online and on my website. So you don't have to squint to look at this. But I drew it to start, the, there's a problem VM. Well. Where do you go from there? Uh, I was always using vRealize Operations Manager, but that's only going to cover part of the issue. You know, what if the vRealize Operations Manager doesn't capture it? What if it's a Windows application crash or a Windows application log issue? vRealize isn't going to capture that. Yeah. But it does help. Whenever you log into a dashboard and you look at a virtual machine, it can tell you where a problem is whenever you just log in into the base recommendations tab or overall health chat tab, it can tell you, hey, we've got some red issues. There's stuff to follow up. That's a really good indicator. But to get to the screen, unless you set logged into it all the time, you have to get in, you have to authenticate, and you have to find the virtual machine or the data center and get to this point. And that doesn't take too much time in you know, one's, one offs, but if it's coming in multiple times over the day, just think about, that's a wrote tasks that you just keep doing. VRealize really helps with error identification and it can help you, you know, if there's issues, you just click on the virtual machine and there it is. If there's an issue down there. If it's healthy, there's easy to digest color coding. And that's awesome, but that's four more clicks of getting in, logging in, typing in the name, making sure you're getting the right virtual machine. Sometimes they show up two or three times depending on if you have plugins or adapters in there. And then you get over into the recommendations and the stress tabs. The heat mapping is great. It can show you over the past six weeks what your stress levels were. It can say, you know, every day at 2 p.m. this machine pegs out at 100%. That may or may not be good, but it tells you that that is a thing that happens all the time. 
So it's not, you know, 100% stress isn't bad if you expect it every time and you've planned for that for application availability. It just says that this is a routine. So this heat map is showing you routine over six weeks. Uh, but it also can tell you how many CPU, how much RAM you might need to add. So it can tell you if there are anomalies, that's called a resource contention issue. But once again, you've clicked in, you've logged in, you've went to the recommendations tab, you found your virtual machine, you've looked at that, you've clicked over into analytics, you've clicked down to stress. That adds up. You know, it's the HTML5 and all the new interfaces are very fast, but it just keeps adding up and adding up. Whenever somebody's screaming, can you remember exactly what you were doing or what you were looking at? When another virtual machine comes in, do you start over with that one or do you go back to this? So we're back to the troubleshooting. That's one, one of the branches. That's the branch down straight in the middle. Or actually, it's to the right. Yeah, that's that branch. Straight down the middle is vCenter, because you would also want to go into vCenter and check if there's anything that's changed on the virtual machine, if you're having any issues there. And then Windows is primarily the environments that I'm t targeting with this. So if you're in a Windows environment, you go in there, you see if there's anything in those event logs, you see the hard drive space. Manually doing all this takes a lot of time. I was spending 30 minutes per machine. So I decided there had to be a better way. So I went and looked into how to do scripting. The script is available on GitHub and all that information is going to be out there. So I created a script, and this is the generation one script. It connected to vCenter, it connected to vRealize Operations Manager using Power CLI. And it used the get WMI object to pull logs and data about the drive space and free space and everything. And so it's interactive, you authenticate, and then it just spits out a text-based thing inside your PowerShell window. It was giving me a lot of great stuff. It's saying two-week trends, daily trends for a virtual machine that was having a problem. It was pulling the uh, Windows log information based on, filtered on errors. So it was giving me any error, the last five errors that happened on those virtual machines. It went to vCenter and it pulled out the last five events that happened in the logs. It was pulling sizing configurations and you could catch some issues if you had a si sizing standard and it was outside of the standard. It was very helpful, it was getting a lot of, of traction and it really you know, cut down that 30 minutes into you know, 20, 30 seconds and then analyzing the output. It was great. But then it got such traction, how do we consume that? How, how would you consume that? Is, you, you can take a screenshot of this and give it to somebody, but it's not going to look great in the archive or be able to go to a manager. So Don Jones from the PowerShell com community, he writes a lot of modules, and he wrote an enhanced HTML module. Uh, what this does is it leverages the output to HTML capabilities that PowerShell already has, and it puts it onto steroids. It lets you use CSS to uh, beautify one of the reports. It lets you do tables. It lets you do uh, lists. Like the top of it is a list that's done just by that, that you couldn't get that through regular output to HTML. So it was taking that script, and it was turning it into something that you could very easily and very quickly present. Yeah, I would be proud to give that to somebody. My CSS skills are awful. So it's just green colors and a few boxes. But if you know CSS or you have some uh, people in your community that can do that and help you with that, you, it is um, something that you could easily do. And so it was going to be hard to make the script show up on the screen where anybody could see it because it's you know, it's just lines inside of Atom or whatever. So I've made the script available at uh, tomgreen.com slash vrops. That's my website. Or at github.com slash my Twitter handle slash vrops. So if you go to that top link, there's actually a link to the slide deck and to the script and to a blog post that covers everything in this. Uh, I'm a host for V Brown Bag's weekly podcast. And you can see V Brown Bag podcast archives. You can watch this presentation. You can watch all the archives at youtube.com slash V Brown Bags. Or V Brown Bag has a typo, but 
please watch the show and, and come and do that. And you can catch me on Twitter at TBGREE00. Um, and there's a lot of information on that script that's coming out and that I'm going to be tweeting about. It's really important to, to think about the way that you're troubleshooting. If you're going to have a takeaway from this, I want you to think about the time that you spend troubleshooting. Nobody likes that. So if you can write it down, draw it out, you don't have to use Visio, I'm just crazy like that. But find some steps that you can take out of it and um, try to automate that with PowerShell or try to use an automation engine, Virilize Orchestrator or um, automation if you've got it. And also, I was very Windows focused. The script is all about Windows. If there's anybody in the community who knows how to leverage SSH and pull the logs out of uh, Linux and that would like to help me make a Linux version of this script, I want pull requests. I want people to go on to the GitHub repo and help me develop that. It's not just about me giving a script. I want, I need help. And so if you guys can, um, can look at that and maybe help me, that would be wonderful. Because you, you know Linux better than I do, so please uh, help me with that. And link up with me on Twitter. And I'm always on there. I'm always willing to talk. Just hit me with a direct message or tweet at me, and I will help you very much. So thank you. I'm uh, happy to, to assist. Just let me know.